React 18 comes with new features called a use transition and start transition which gives you fine game control over specifying a low priority update. And that is exactly what we will demonstrate in this tutorial. So let's go. We start off with an empty React application and create two simple state variables, one that will store a string and one that will store an array of string items. We create a utility function called handle change and this will be invoked whenever the user types a keystroke into a given input element and we will use the updated value for the state variable as well as loading up a fresh batch of items that will be searched based on this value. Then we have another utility function called handle random which will be invoked by a particular user button click and this will generate a random value which will be used for the value y to the input as well as setting the items based on a search items result. Finally, we render the input that is wired to the value as well as handle change, the button that is wired to handle random, as well as the list that is wired to the items array. Now, one thing that I want to point out over here is that the value and the items is kept in sync, both for handle change, which is wired to the input, as well as handle random, which is wired to the button. Now, let's look at what this UI looks like in the browser. The user can get a list of items by either typing something into the input element or by clicking the random button. Notice that as the user types something into the input, there is a noticeable lag between some characters being accepted till they are actually rendered by the input element. However, this delay is not a big deal for the button as when the user clicks the button, the input and the list updates simultaneously, so it's not as weird. Giving us fine control over interruptible state updates is exactly what is offered by the new use transition hook. This hook is exported from the root level of React, so we bring it in just like we bring in the use state hook. Calling this hook gives us access to two things as a tuple. The first one is an is pending variable and the second one is a start transition function. We will look at is pending in a bit, but the start transition is something that can be used to wrap state updates such that they can be interrupted by other more critical renders. So here when the user interacts with the input, the handle change function gets invoked and we update the value immediately. However, we do not update the items immediately and instead we do that in a start transition callback. This means that any render that is triggered by the set items call can be stopped, for example, by the user entering another keystroke. And that's exactly what we see when we interact with the UI. We can provide a number of keystrokes and the list rendering will happen whenever there is a break between the user entering some keys. This keeps the input element as performant as possible as the value is always updating, even though the list might be lagging behind. Whereas when the user interacts with the random button, we have made the choice of keeping the input and the list in sync. Now start transition is something that is exported from the React root level as well. However, we prefer to use the use transition hook because that gives us access to the is pending flag as well. So let's put that in action. This flag, which is returned as the first member by use transition, is set to true whenever a transition is interrupted because of a critical render that needs to happen, for example, because of a user input. We can use this to customize the rendering of our component. For example, we can turn a slight opacity onto the input and the button if there is a pending search that needs to render. With this change in place, as the user types additional characters into the input element, it turns slightly transparent while that input is processed into the search list. However, as expected, no such transparency will happen if we are just clicking the render button as we haven't put that behind a transition. I'll wrap things up there. If you're interested in learning more about React 18 concurrent features, then here is a lesson that is dedicated to the new use deferred value hook that is perhaps more convenient but doesn't offer the same level of fine grained control as we saw in this lesson. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you in the next one.